crying out we need more funding for mental health services after a tragedy such as a mass shooting is actually further perpetuating the stigma of mental illness. And Neil deGrasse Dyson, the sciencey dude, is a soulless idiot. Straight talk and fedora kick here. As most of you know by now, two, not one, but two mass shootings took place in the U.S. over the weekend inside a 48-hour time period. The first being in El Paso, Texas, at a Walmart where 20 people were killed, and the other in Dayton, Ohio, at a bar where nine were killed. This video is surely going to offend some, but this needs to be said. Once again, after a mass shooting, there are the calls all over the news and social media for stronger gun control laws. Well, no shit, Sherlock. As many would know, the U.S. has the highest rates of gun casualties. What will it take for the U.S. to get its crap together? Even Neil deGrasse Tyson had his own tweet fart, which was not only beyond stupid, but it was downright soulless. Makes me wonder if he is becoming a darling for the NRA. I will get to that shortly. Let's first get to the old memes that pop up over and over and over again. We need more prayer in schools. Video games are to blame. We need more services and government funding for mental health care. But time after time, no one addresses that old elephant in the room. Lax gun control laws and the politicians who are too chicken shit to implement them. I know, many don't want it. I love hearing how we can't take guns away because how else will people protect themselves at home? I mean, seriously? Here in Canada, which does have gun control laws, though we're slowly becoming more lax ourselves, and just to mention, a side note, if that Harper puppet gets into power this October, we can count on him loosening the rules to per even permit folks to have AR-15s, AK-47, or other assault rifles. So, my fellow Canucks, something to think about come Election Day. I honestly think Speaker Andy and his ilk are actually jealous of the mass shootings that happen with such frequency south of the border. Yes, never underestimate human depravity. And people wonder why I don't like people. Hmm. In the first place, other countries in the world, many young people are playing video games. Those very same video games Americans like to play, many of which with themes of violence. Yet those countries do not have nearly the mass shootings or gun crimes than the U.S. has. Prayers in schools? More prayer? More church-going people? Please. Other countries have many religious people who pray regularly, and, but they still do shitty things to each other. And religion does not make for better people. In fact, there are statistics and studies showing that children raised in secular households grow up to be more compassionate and empathetic. Plus, there is more than enough blood from all the wars to go around in the name of religion. And by the by, weren't some of these mass shootings that took place in public places in the U.S. in the name of good old Christianity? Next. And now my favorite. More government funding is needed for mental health care. The mentally ill become the rallying cry every time there is such a tragedy. I will agree that both the U.S. and Canada need to do better in funding services for mental health care. But it is funny that most who are clamoring about this usually don't give a crap about the mentally ill. In fact, those very same people ostracize and further perpetuate the stigma of mental health. All of a sudden, the mentally ill become a convenient straw man argument. First off, there are plenty of people with mental health issues all over the world for different reasons. In fact, the statistics here in Canada pretty much mirror those of the United States regarding mental health issues. 
mental health care services continue to be cut in Canada in the name of austerity. And funding and access to mental health care services in Canada is indeed almost as bad as in the U.S. Yet Canada does not have nearly as many going around shooting up a school or a Walmart or other public places. Why is that? Oh, don't tell me. I know lacks gun control in the United States and stronger gun controls laws in Canada as well as other jurisdictions around the world. Yeah, that's the elephant in the room that must be addressed once and for all. I have also seen the nonsense that some on the Twitter machine are suggesting. Arming those public places. Okay, once again, here in Canada, we don't have armed security guards at Walmart or the movie theater or in schools or in bars. Yet we seem to function just fine for the most part. I'm not going to sit here and lie saying we've never had mass shootings in Canada. We most certainly have. But we don't see them at nearly the frequency as in the United States. It's gotten to the point where I'm sure many people might be afraid to go shopping or send their kids to school in the United States. This is not normal in a civilized society. Well, society ain't so civilized, but I digress. And as far as I can remember, I haven't seen two mass shootings back to back in less than a 48 hour time period. And another thing to be noted, at least after a mass shooting, politicians do try to make some effort to uh, look uh, to changing legislation. So, so, uh, for example, after the Polytechnic Massacre in the 80s, the Chrétien government implemented uh, the Long Gun Registry, which is now scrapped, of course. But you get the idea. When former Australian Prime Minister, a conservative, I might add, John Howard, he confiscated guns and introduced gun control laws after a shooting in the 90s. Gun crimes fell exponentially since. See how this works? And now for Mr. Science Dude, Neil deGrasse Tyson. Let's put this fart on the screen, shall we? Because this, boys and girls, is what we call rationalization of an irrational situation. Sciencey dude ain't so smart after all. In the past 48 hours, the USA horrifically lost 34 people to mass shootings. On average, across any 48 hours, we lose 500 to medical errors, 300 to the flu, 250 to suicide, 200 to car accidents, 40 to homicide via handgun. Often our emotions respond more to spectacle than data. That's pretty fucking cold, dude. Seriously. So, are you going to tell that to the loved one of somebody who was shot and killed? Are you perhaps going to tell the parents of a kid who was shot at a school shooting? Is that what you're going to tell them? That their emotions are just simply responding more to the spectacle than to actual data? Good to know. Duly noted. That is what we call soulless. But let's go over some of that laundry list. Some are not even worth going over. For instance, 250 to suicide. How many of those suicides were committed using a gun? Something to think about. And 40 to homicide via a handgun. Well, here's the thing. This wasn't committed by a handgun. This was committed by assault rifles. Once again, assault rifles that are not used for hunting. They are not used to protect yourself in your home. They are used to kill a lot of people really, really fast. And yet, how do you rationalize this? And now, last but certainly not least, back to what I was saying at the top of this video. The rallying cry for more mental health care services when ordinarily these very same people don't give a flying fuck about the mentally ill. Those same people who ostracize them, bully them, and discriminate against them. 
Oh, ain't the hypocrisy just stunning. In fact, if anything, this further perpetuates the stigma of mental illness because it's enough that many, if not most, think that in addition to our quirks or inability to conform to the norm or inability to control emotions, that we're violent people. When in fact, this couldn't be further from the truth. In fact, those of us with mental health issues are more likely to be the victims of violence than actually committing it. Think about it. In addition to suffering through the issues I just mentioned, we also tend to have a credibility problem as many, if not most, like to tell us that whatever problem we face or notice a societal ill, it's all in our head. So this makes us easy prey. Because if we complain about being victimized in any shape or form, we're dismissed. And this is what makes life a little more precarious for a lot of us in so many respects. Another thing, the first shooting over the weekend of the El, uh, the El Paso, Texas incident, it appears to be white supremacy at work here. Are we going to seriously suggest that white supremacy and racism are clinically defined as mental illness? Seriously? The shooter of the Sandy Hook tragedy suffered from Asperger's, apparently. What happened? There was a flood on social media about the, those on the spectrum were prone to violence and they needed more supervision and structure. To the point where many parents of kids on the spectrum or those on the spectrum themselves spoke out saying, hey, that is not who we are. That is not what we do. Caring about the mental health should never be a part-time thing to spring up whenever it's convenient. It should never be about memes or tropes. It should never be used as a straw man argument to ignore any elephant in the room. The obvious here is strong gun control laws. I can't say this enough. Talk self-defense. Nobody needs to own an assault rifle like an AR-15 or an AK-47 or whatever is out there. And it is a sick society when people are obsessed about being able to carry any kind of firearm to the park or to the mall. Yes, I have seen this. More obsessed with keeping their guns than actually thinking about the tragedies that occurred by fellow gun owners. Assault rifles, not for protecting your home. It's definitely not to hunt food, which already I find abhorrent, but get the idea. It is for deliberate killing. Once again, full stop. But before gun control laws can be implemented, it is time that big corporate money were taken out of politics. It appears that both the Republican and Democrat politicians are indeed in the pockets of the NRA, as well as gun manufacturers as it is. Rant over. Please take care of yourselves and each other. Straight Talk and Fedora Trick over and out. And now, last but certainly not least, back to what I was saying at the top of this video. The rallying cry for more mental health care services when ordinarily these very same people don't give a flying fuck about the mentally ill. Those same people who ostracize them, bully them, and discriminate against them. Oh, ain't the hypocrisy just stunning. In fact, if anything, this further perpetuates the stigma of mental illness because it's enough that many, if not most, think that in addition to our quirks or inability to conform to the norm or inability to control emotions, that we're violent people. When in fact, this couldn't be further from the truth. In fact, those of us with mental health issues are more likely to be the victims of violence than actually committing it. Think about it. In addition to suffering through the issues I just mentioned, we also tend to have a credibility problem as many, if not most, like to tell us that whatever problem we face or notice a societal ill, it's all in our head. So this makes us easy prey. Because if we complain about being victimized in any shape or form, we're dismissed. 
And this is what makes life a little more precarious for a lot of us in so many respects. Another thing, the first shooting over the weekend of the El, uh, the El Paso, Texas incident, it appears to be white supremacy at work here. Are we going to seriously suggest that white supremacy and racism are clinically defined as mental illness? Seriously? The shooter of the Sandy Hook tragedy suffered from Asperger's, apparently. What happened? There was a flood on social media about the, those on the spectrum were prone to violence and they needed more supervision and structure. To the point where many parents of kids on the spectrum or those on the spectrum themselves spoke out saying, hey, that is not who we are. That is not what we do. Caring about the mental health should never be a part-time thing just spring up whenever it's convenient. It should never be about memes or tropes. It should never be used as a straw man argument to ignore any elephant in the room. The obvious here is strong gun control laws. I can't say this enough. Talk self-defense. Nobody needs to own an assault rifle like an AR-15 or an AK-47 or whatever is out there. And it is a sick society when people are obsessed about being able to carry any kind of firearm to the park or to the mall. Yes, I have seen this. More obsessed with keeping their guns than actually thinking about the tragedies that occurred by fellow gun owners. Assault rifles, not for protecting your home. It's definitely not to hunt food, which already I find abhorrent, but get the idea. It is for deliberate killing. Once again, full stop. But before gun control laws can be implemented, it is time that big corporate money were taken out of politics. It appears that both the Republican and Democrat politicians are indeed in the pockets of the NRA, as well as gun manufacturers as it is. Rant over. Please take care of yourselves and each other. Straight Talk and Fedora Trick over and out.